Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Basement Basement Boys Podcast. I am Chris Gray. That is Eric Mincer. We got Dev for a little bit here. It's my fault we're not getting him in the whole thing today because I'm a trash human being. But also today, we're going to introduce someone who's going to be around. Going to be around on the podcast a little bit. He's the guy who's going to just kind of reel in this jumbled mess that is three dudes talking sports. We're going to introduce you now to the new producer. He will be here some days not, some days not with schedules, but we got Mike Craft. What up, dude? What do you do? <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to the basement. Oh, shit. All right. So, Mike, why don't you give us the first topic of the day? First topic, Tiger Woods car accident. All right. So, yeah, this is a major news of the week so far. Tiger Woods just coming off back surgery in December, I think it was. Recently. Yeah. Something like that. Um, Even more recently, he was, I don't remember the name of the tournament because I don't follow golf, but he was at some tournament this past weekend, and he was the one who was giving the trophy to the winner. And, like, you know how they have kind of like an MC golf, those things like right, that? Right. He was doing that. Yeah, he's he's been trying to work back in after his latest, like, batch of injuries. But this is going to be a... A major, major setback for him. Multiple compound compound fractures in his leg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they had the rod inserted in his leg. He has, like, nails and screws in his feet. And it's not just the bone. The I guess, You're looking at soft tissue muscle. I mean, the muscles, too, and uh, soft tissue. I guess they call it the envelope where the bone sits is, like, apparently destroyed. They had to cut that open to like release the pressure. Like, did you see pictures of the crash? Yeah, I have, it's I have pretty not gnarly. Seen pictures of the oh crash my. yet? Yeah, it, it looks terrible. So yeah, the crazy thing though is that it was just a one car cr- crash. There was the uh, L.A. County Sheriff's Department determined that he was not intoxicated, and uh, the investigation is still being done to figure out like what caused it. But apparently, uh, sorry. Apparently, he was like it was at least from the reporting I've seen, that, like, they did have him at, like, a very high rate of speed. Yeah. Um, they, they said that, like, area where he crashed is notoriously known for lots of accidents. Because they, um, apparently, like, the officer on hand when speaking to the media said, like, I regularly clock people here going at 80, 85, stuff like that. Like, so he was probably going at a high rate of speed and lost control from the sound of it. Yeah. And I mean, his car also had like has black box technology in it. So once they get that back to the lab and open that bad boy up, they'll be able to see, you know, how fast he was going and what was happening. Wait, wait, wait. that's wild. Do cars have that now? Apparently, is my, is my what, car recording me? <laughs> what what kind of car was it? I feel like that's uh, a very Tesla. It was thing. a Genesis. Yeah, Genesis SUV. Nah, weird, weird. I right? would never picture Tiger Woods being a Genesis or SUV guy. Yo, well, I need to go talk to my car, see if it's the feds right now. Well, <laughs> other though, like, was it his car or was it the um, country club that he was going to's car? And they were like, yo, or pick our car. I definitely don't think it was his car. Or was it the housewife he was banging's car? Hey, man. All right, too soon, I get it. He, Fuck <laughs> he, he's been doing better. He's been doing the right things, so okay? No, did you guys, either of you guys see anybody, Mike, too, did you see the documentary, uh, HBO? Has a documentary Tiger two parts. No. I have not seen it yet. Nope. Like, yeah, it's it's intense. It's intense. His no. dad was kind of nuts. Doesn't yes surprise and, me. Yes He's and been... no. He was nuts in a certain way, but he was also like kind of his direction and like kind of help like his moral compass, I guess. Yeah, but no, his dad was nuts when he was like three years old. He was like, "You are going to be a golfer, but you are going to be so important that you're more important than Buddha. You are going to transcend humanity." Human beings will follow you. Like he was saying, you're, I mean, you're he, gonna go from golf to like Jesus Christ. I mean, he's not wrong to a no. five year old kid. That's a lot. Okay, but that's a lot of pressure. If you, I'm, I'm just saying, he's not. He's honestly not wrong though. Name one other golfer. Arnold Palmer. Bill Mickelson. Okay, so yeah, the other fucking. <laughs> superstars of the golf world. No, no, but, but that's and the if thing. you talk to any golf analyst, the best golf 
outing of the year went on last weekend, no one watched it because there was no Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods there was, was there. He gave out the trophy. Right, but he wasn't <laughs> – he didn't play, so no one watched it. So no Tiger Woods, no Dustin Johnson, no any of these guys. It was not watched, but it was the, like, high – I'm not like I'm not a golf aficionado. I play a little here or there, but I'm terrible at it. Um, his dad wasn't wrong. It's just like his dad was like, "You're going to," be, but it wasn't just about golf. No, I get it. it. I like, get it. It's it a like, lot of pressure for a kid. You're leading humanity to a greater place, but still, I mean, this is uh, just another chapter for Tiger that he, it's not. Honestly, uh, ever since his dad died, things have just been going south for him. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not defending the guy because, like, from what I've heard, like. Tiger's life was absolutely wild. There's a there's an old story of him. He was hanging out with Derek Jeter, and I forget the third person there. But it was right after his dad died, so he was going out for, like, the first time in his life, basically. And there was a girl staring at Tiger across the bar, and he noticed her, and he was talking to Derek. He was like, oh, she's a cute girl. Like, what do I do? And Derek Jeter just looks at him and goes, bro, you're fucking Tiger Woods. It was Michael Jordan. It was, I saw the documentary. It was Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, and Tiger Woods hanging out in Vegas because where else would Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan hang out? Atlantic City. Why are you in Atlantic City? You need to go to Vegas. <laughs> Yo, because he's got to get back in time for the next game. <laughs> I mean, it's true. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend that documentary. But for Tiger, I, I got to raise the question. I, I don't think he should... Like, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think he should ever drive again. I mean, the only other real driving thing I can... There was two driving things I can remember. One, the it was either, like, a sleeping pill or he took Xanax or something, and he fell asleep at the wheel or something like that. That's exactly what mm-hmm. it was. Yeah. Um, but then there was also... He got pulled over for DUI in Jupiter, Florida. This is a big that, car that was the That was the... There was two. Was it, there, there was, was the, two? There was the accident that... Remember the accident that everybody was talking about where that was, like... What eventually led to the whole fight with his wife and everything, like, kind of spiraled from that. I thought I thought both incidents did. I don't know. He's, this they, is, they this were is close the third together. One. This is the third car in- accident he's been involved in. Yeah, like, but I thought, I thought the car accident happened because he was running from his wife after the argument. Yeah, but on Xanax. Right. I'm I'm lost. I can't keep track of his yeah, alleged yeah. car accidents. <laughs> now, uh, okay, so the more we talk about it, the more I'm fucking getting on the side of this. Let's not let Tiger Woods drive anymore thing. You can so, afford, afford a driver. Just have a driver. I mean, he's got the money, but and I think we, we have to. He has drivers like cars. Ah, uh, I see what he's doing there. He did uh, the golf. I got it. As Good as job, as buddy. As Eric's Good job. Drivers, you. I understood. Hashtag golf. <laughs> so we have to ask a question that everyone's going to ask: Is he done with golf? Like I said, I said yes for Alex Smith going through a similar situation with the leg, and he proved me wrong. So if there's anyone who's going to do it, it's Tiger Woods. He's battled back through fucking everything. See, I say no because he's battled back through everything, where he's already had so many knee surgeries and back surgeries and stuff. Like, will he play golf again? Probably. Will he ever be Tiger Woods again? Oh, yeah. I'm not saying, I don't think so. I'm not saying... I'm saying just coming back to the sport. I'm not saying he's winning a Masters. Right. But, like, if he's Tiger Woods, the pressure's going to be, like, from the time he's three years old, he's going to be the best ever. Which yeah, he I is. Agree. Which he is. Yeah. But I don't think he's going to come back to that level. I agree with Eric. Like, he might play again, but he's definitely not winning. I mean, dude's coming off back surgery before basically having to get his whole leg like fixed up, you know, made out of titanium. And I was reading that like the worst part is like the joint right that connects um the bottom of your leg to your top of your foot, which is your pivot point, which is what you need like need that in golf. You need to be able to pivot from what I've been watching and listening. So he's done. He's not winning a masters, he's not winning any more tournaments. You know, but hey, we saw some greatness. So congrats, Tiger. Yeah, I definitely, like I said, I definitely don't think he's winning anymore, but do I think he could definitely, like, come back and play? Like, Alex Smith came back, and he wasn't Alex Smith from before the accident, but he played well. But Alex like, Smith also didn't have, like, a series of major surgeries no, I agree. before it. So, no, I agree, uh, I agree. What, what we know is that regardless of whether or not he comes back and plays well is that this is all over ESPN for the next three, four days, like, 
the only thing they're gonna talk about is oh, yeah. tiger. It's just whoa, tiger, whoa, tiger, whoa. Tiger, tiger, You're tiger. being generous. It's gonna be at least a month. Well, yeah, but there's also LeBron. LeBron, yeah. LeBron, LeBron. So Yeah, don't gotta... worry. They they'll sprinkle some LeBron and Tiger in. And they'll probably mention that they were born on the same day. Same birthday. Do they, really? Uh, really? I didn't even know that. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know that one. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um all right, that's about it. That's what I got on that. You got the next topic for us, Mike? NBA I was going to say, before we get to the next topic, oh, this oh. is probably a good time for me to bounce out. Oh, I'm sorry, Dev. All it's right. okay. Yeah, it's, dude, it's 11.27. I got, yep. Someone's got to be there to run the show for you guys. That's true. I'll be there later with a lunchbox for you. I will not be there today. Dope. Eric, I'll see you <laughs> later. Chris, I'll see you tomorrow. Craft, you working today? Yep. I'll see you At in like an hour and a half. Yep. There you go. We work right. together out here. We work together in there. We th- we just we just out here. We a collective, all right? Seventy five percent of us will be there later. <laughs> 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 math hashtag math. Peace. All right, this is later, brother. All right, next up we got the NBA All Stars. Your starting lineup for the East will be Kevin Durant, Giannis Akintempo, Ada Dacumbo. Good job, <laughs> starting off great. Yeah, I was just just. <laughs> The guy with the Greek and freak. The guy with the Greek name. Uh, Bradley Beal, Joel Embiid, and Kyrie Irving. Joel Embiid. We're starting off great. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, I honestly, I can honestly agree with most of that. Um, I might put Harden over Kyrie, but. I would, too, except uh, the only thing is Harden didn't start the year in the East, which I think is probably why he got less votes. Than right. Curry, but no, I'd agree. I mean, yeah, there's no one there that doesn't belong. They're all top of their class, top of their positions. Yeah, I see it. Uh, screen went dark. Uh, all right. So, how about the West, Mike? We got LeBron James. Okay. Ste- <laughs> I can't. That always makes me laugh. <laughs> Stephen Curry, Luka Doncic, 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 Nikola Jokic. Nicole looked joking. Yeah, no, that was no, good. yeah, that was okay. And Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Um. See, for me, the only thing there is I want Dame Lillard to start, but I can't say that Steph and Luca don't deserve it. You know, like, right. like if if it was Luca and Dame, I would probably be saying I want Steph to start because he's Steph. If it was Steph and Dame, I'd say I'd want Luca to start because Luca's having a crazy year. Like. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things where you think you think a guy deserves it, so you want him to be in there, but you also think the other guys deserve it, so you want them to be in there, and it's yeah. just like fuck. You can't <laughs> you can't take one out because it's like we'll get to the reserves in a second, but if like Paul George was voted in as the starting shooting guard, I'd say okay, he's having a hell of a year. Yeah. like why not? It's it's apples and oranges. When I feel like I feel like reserves and starters. Except for like the like the LeBron Jameses, the Kevin Durant's, the guys you know are gonna be there because they are like the league. You know what I mean? This, I think starters to reserves are kind of just flip a hat. Like it's just the yeah, it's a popularity contest for the most part. I mean, you see two guys on the Nets because it's Brooklyn. You see, you're gonna always have Steph Curry. Like Clay Thompson came in like I think eighth in the voting. You know, it's just the bigger names, the bigger markets kind of thing. I'm not sure if I agree with that on the Brooklyn thing, though. No? Just because, like, this team's this team's finally starting to figure out. They're getting it together. No one cares. Like, I, don't, I don't think that's true. I, I disagree. I don't hear anyone talking about the Nets. They're, I think most people are, are, like, declaring them the winner of the East at this point. I, I agree that they everyone agrees that they're good, but I just don't think... I don't feel like... During, like, the Warriors run... With as the big three, that's all ever anyone was ever talking about. That was over like four years though, where they yeah. had Durant and no, I think Durant was there for a th- no, but even three. what even directly when he got signed, it was the talk of the town because holy shit, these three like spectacular all could be ones on the same team. Yeah, they but they had already been to two finals at that point. Like this Nets team, I I know what you're saying, but the Nets team right now hasn't accomplished anything. But I do think they're talking about it because people are saying this is the first. As of this moment, this is the first team ever to have three players averaging over 25 points a game. We'll see, uh, see if that can stand. People are constantly talking about 
DeMarcus Cousins is going to be free agent. Will he take less money to go to the Nets? Will Blake Griffin take less money to go to the Nets to just chase rings? Like, I'm hearing a lot about the Nets, but it's also because I listen to a lot of local sports radio, and we happen to live in New York. No, but yeah, even the like the lo- the local sports radio I hear, like I listen to Alan Hahn and Bart Scott show pretty much every day on my way to work. They're pretty much only ever talking about the Knicks. Yeah, and I understand Alan Hahn's a Knicks guy, but that's fair. Like this, it's just such a like they say this is a major market and blah 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 for the Nets and blah 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 blah. It's a major market for the Knicks. Right, but even still, like. Being the little brother in New York is a bigger market than the Pacers are going to yeah, ever see. Okay, I can agree to that. Statistically speaking, like, again, we're going to get to the to the reserves in a minute and the snubs and all of that. Like, the Pacers are currently in fourth place in the East. Sabonis is having a hell of a season, and nobody's going to ever talk about them. Like, the Chicago Bulls have this resurgence, and they're suddenly in the playoffs. Levine's going nuts, but you're going to hear about the Nets more than you're going to hear about the Bulls. And they're the Bulls. I don't know. I know, like, I agree. Uh, I was recently, uh, uh, Sunday night, we were watching the Clippers and the Nets, and it was like, these are both the little brothers. Like, the Lakers are going to always be the talk of Los Angeles. The Knicks are going to always be New York team. But the Nets and the Clippers are both really good teams. And even being the, the uh, but smaller team in the big market, they're still big. So I think that plays a factor into it. But I think the only, well, obviously the only reason you're talking about the Nets team is that they're so good, but when they're not, they're just not talk. They're just as irrelevant as a small market team, in my opinion. They might hundred percent. No, that's you're absolutely right. Um, they're just on a hot streak right now. I feel the same way with like the Islanders, even like they they do not even winning the Stanley Cup. They do not touch the revenue that the Rangers make. You know what I mean? Just because they're just not the the hot team. They're not the brandable team. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's the same. The Rangers and the Knicks have Madison Square Garden behind them, where like, the Barclays Center, if you've ever been there, is not the coolest place in the world. Like, it's nice. It's just, like, it, it's nothing special to it. It's a stadium, yeah. It's, it's, another, it's, it's, like, another it's arena. an arena, yeah. I saw uh, Henry Cejudo knock the fuck out of T.J. Dillashaw there. It was great. We had a great time, but it, it, it was an arena. I went to the NBA draft there when Joel Embiid was drafted and didn't want to be a sixer. And it was cool, but it wasn't anything. You're like, that's a short garden. You walk in there, and the air just smells like history. Like, yeah. Like, you knew Ali fought here. You knew... Uh, Ali? Oh, I didn't even realize you were wearing that shirt. You have a lot of Muhammad Ali shirts, my guy. I enjoy it. No, and... Yeah, I know, I know. I like Muhammad Ali. Um, we're getting off the rails here. Let's go Let's go back to the All-Star game. <laughs> we tend to do that on this show just a little bit. Very true. All right. Who do we got in the reserve? All right, starting with the East. We got Jalen Brown, James Harden. Zach Levine, Julius Randle, Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum, and Nikola Jusevic. Vooch. All right. The so, Iron Vooch. Hold on, hold on. Before before we even get into the talk about it, can we just get a round of applause for our boy, Julius Randle? Eric's been willing this into existence for months now, making the goddamn All-Star game, and it is so deserved. Hey, so deserved. 23 points, almost 11 rebounds, 5.5 assists. He's taken a huge step up from last year to this year. He could be in the conversation for most improved player in the NBA, although that probably will go to Jalen Brown. Julius Randle last night, or two nights ago, whenever it was, the Knicks had their first home game in front of a crowd, 10% capacity, people, everyone there had masks, temperature checks, all the protocols in place, and the Knicks gave him the mic, let him give a speech, which is cool because the Knicks don't usually do things like that. Usually it's just kind of like you're supposed to be here because your fans give us your money. Yeah. But they were like, hey, let's let the guy say thank you. And the crowd gave him MVP chance. I think that once we all get vaccinated and we can be extra safe in this, we might have to go check out one of these bubble games. Because, like, like we can, we can bring it along. We can film it for the viewers just to give them the kind of experience of what's going on with that. I am so down. I would be, honestly, I know we just talk shit about the Nets, but, like, I'd be down for the Nets, too, because they're really exciting. Yeah. I'd be down for the Knicks because I love the Knicks. They're going to be really expensive seats. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Because, like, Nick tickets are, for those of you outside of New York who don't know this, Nick's tickets are, are expensive. Astronomically expensive. Expensive. We're talking, like, 140s for the nosebleeds against, like, the magic. 
But now I you just... got to think there's even more, to, like, even See, less supply. I, I'm, I'm not sure about that because I'm not sure if everyone's going to want to jump all, through all these hoops of going to get tested. Go, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's just supply yeah, yeah. and it's yeah, supply and demand, test. though. There's so much less supply because there's only 10% capacity that people, the markup's going to be ridiculous. I, I, like, don't get me wrong. I think it's going to be a big markup, but I'm not sure it's going to be quite as big because it's a, it, like, I read through the guidelines of trying to get there. It's a lot to do. You good. know what I mean? Well, it's good that they're being safe. We don't want players. Yeah, getting, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, getting sick I'm stuff. not trying to say, like, they're, they're right, going I'm, about it wrong. Right, I'm right, just right. saying it's just, it's a lot of hoops to jump through and, so it, I, I think it might. I don't think they're gonna get to like two grand for nosebleeds. You know nah, what I mean? No, but I. It wouldn't shock me if we're paying like two hundred dollars to get in the door. Like I don't know. Either I'd do way, it. We're, I, all right, I'm down. Either way, <laughs> Julius Randall, huge fan. I also have him on my list of great tattoos, which we can get to maybe later, maybe not today. Either way, Julius Randall, congrats in the first All Star game. Uh, so hype on that. So hype else, on that. For the first time, Jalen Brown for the first time. Zach Levine, first time All-Star. Uh, this is two now for Tatum. All right. We got to talk Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic. V- Nikola. I, I'm, I'm so bad at saying his name. I'm so Vooch. bad. Vooch. So he's uh, two, two-time now All-Star. 24 points a game. 12 rebounds a game. Look, the guy is good. Very much so deserves to be an All-Star. But I don't want him on the team. Why? <laughs> because for me, the biggest sub- snub is DeMontis Sabonis, who is averaging 25 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, 52% field goal shooting. The Pacers are actually a good team, which nobody expected. Sabonis has had three triple doubles this year. He's won't be a lot of money. That's what it comes down to. DraftKings and gambling. I like Sabonis. I like Vooch. Vooch is a good player, too. But I think Sabonis deserves it over him if you're going to make one over the other. If there's one thing we've ever known about Eric on this show, is if you can buy his loyalty. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's personal. I take it personal. Hey, Cliff Kingsbury, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> very, very personal. Uh, he's going to win you one big bet. You're going to be like, yo, Cliff Kingsbury, fucking coach of the year, my guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But if you're looking at snubs, I'm just saying, like, you know, the talk is, I mean, Trey Young is averaging yeah. 27 points, nine assists a game. He's got um, a player efficiency rating, ready of 23.4, which is 17th in the NBA. For reference, LeBron James is, tw- is 18th. So if you're saying Trey Young's a little bit more efficient than LeBron, it's hard to leave him off the list. And if I had to take anybody that's on the Ulster team off, it would be. Vooch. Yeah. It's the way I'm looking at it. No, I, I, could, I, can, I can roll with those. I can definitely roll with that. Um, yeah, I just don't know why. I don't know why. I just, for some reason, I've just never, like, I don't, like, not like him. I just don't like Vucevic. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, it's just, I don't know. It's just one of those guys that you see him and you're just like, yep, I don't like you. <laughs> I know nothing about you, but I, I don't like you. <laughs> In a way, he's like, He's, 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 I don't know, he's very stoic. There's no personality to him. That whole Magic team doesn't really have a personality, identity. They're not very good. They're kind, you kind of forget they're in the league. And and then it's just like, oh, yeah, Aaron Gordon has incredible dunks, but he's been out for the last, like, two months. So there's really, like, there's really, like, no reason to watch them most of the time. Yeah, just keep him in the dunk contest, d- jumping over, like, fucking. Realistically, if they, if they like... were owned by Disney, they probably would have gotten moved. So long ago, because why the fuck was there a team in Orlando? Um, yes and no. I like, I like that they're the magic based off of like the Disney magic. Like I, because I think, I think, by Disney. yeah, I know, I know. I think it's, I think it's solid branding for them there, and I think it's a, it's a big tourist town. So I think that's probably one of the reasons you'd want to have a team there. They probably do decent money. I don't know their financials. But. I have no idea. All, all I know is that if I had to bump one player off, and also the other, I, I don't know if you want to get to your su- snubs or if you had snubs that you, I'm just stealing everybody's snubs for the snub team. <laughs> How, uh, Bam. Bam Adebayo. Yeah. N- 19 points, almost 10 assists, five and a half rebounds a game. I mean, five and a half assists, almost 10 rebounds a game. The Heat got off to a hot, bad start, but that's because Jimmy Butler wasn't playing. Dragic wasn't playing. 
they're back. They're only a couple games out of it right now, so they'll be fine. Again, I'm not saying Vooch isn't deserving, but if I had to pull one of these players, I'm not going to say, like, you know, Jason Tatum's incredible season, Ben Simmons' incredible season, Zach Levine's been red hot. You know who's going to say Harden shouldn't be on the team? So yeah. If I had to, I would pull Vooch and put in one of these other guys in the East. I, yeah, I, the East, I was just kind of focused on Brandel made it, and I was very happy on that, you know what I mean? There's only one, there's only one player, we'll get to that when we get to the West Reserves, that was a snub, I guess is not anymore, but you all know who I'm talking about now, but we'll get to that. All right, so let's, let's <laughs> do that. Let's just go into the West. All right, so what's the, what's the West Reserves look like, Mike? Anthony Davis, Paul George, Rudy Gobert, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Chris Paul, and Zion Williamson. Yo, you are not good at these European names, huh? <laughs> I like it, though. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, but, yeah, so Anthony Davis gets pulled. He's hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we all know that. So Devin Booker, the, the only, in my opinion, was the big snub of the All-Star game. Because, like I said, All-Star games are kind of... Figgity to me, they're like they're popularity contests. They're not like re- they're not truly based on snap, uh, on uh, stats. So it's not a it's it like there's always reasons you can see why this guy would get it and this why w- wouldn't. Yeah, this guy's numbers might be a little better, but I just Devin Booker was the one guy I was just like, how fucking. How? <laughs> yeah, and then you saw LeBron and a lot of guys take the Twitter saying how he's the most disrespected player in our league and blah blah blah. And it's like when LeBron's tweeting something like that, the NBA is gonna find a way to get Booker there. Oh yeah. So it made sense. I mean, I don't know if any anyone else is gonna miss because of injury. Like knock on wood that nobody gets hurt between now and the All Star game. But I think you'll see, you know, other guys who are deserving make it. So it's good for Devin Booker. Uh, the only players at West that I had for snubs, maybe Brandon Ingram, because he's averaging 24 points. He was like he was an All Star last year. He's the most improved player in the league last year. And if you look, all of his numbers got better. Like he's scoring more, rebounding's up. I think assists are down, but like his shooting percentage is up. Turnovers are down. Like he's gotten better from last year. But they took Zion, and it, if you're taking the New Orleans Pelicans players, it's like okay. Zion. Zion. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're not gonna have an All Star game without Zion. And, and I, I also, to your point, I think Brendan Ingram is a casualty of being moved away from this from the big markets because he was on L. A. You heard his name fucking seventy times a week when he was on L. A. Then he gets moved um to the Nets. I think it was right. Ingram, no, he was part of the Anthony Davis trade. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. So he got moved to the Pelicans. And you haven't heard from him since. He was an All Star last year. I know, but like you, you don't, you don't hear his name nine hundred times, even as good as he's playing. You know what I mean? Last year, he, last when year he was on the this year, you didn't. I I barely heard about him last year. I'm more of a casual than you, so you're a little more deep into it. Like I'm not saying his play went down. I'm not saying he wasn't like he did worse. I'm just saying, even though he wasn't playing as well when he was on the Lakers, you heard his name. Every other sentence. Yeah, but speaking of another former Laker, our boy Julius Randle. Yeah. He was drafted by the Lakers. Lakers gave up on him, and now he's an all-star. Brandon Ingram gave up on him. Now he's a star. I mean, there's the thing where Jordan Clarkson was on the Lakers, part of that team. They got gave up on him, and he's probably going to win sixth man of the year. A couple of nights ago, he had 35 off the bench. I, I don't I don't know if you could say they gave up on Brandon Ingram, because like, if Anthony Davis is on the table, you'd... That's Anthony fair, Davis. That's fair. <laughs> like, that's fair. Yeah, 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 you do that. It worked out well for the Lakers. They yeah. did win a championship. <laughs> Brandon Ingram, and then the only other player I had was um Shea Gilchrist Alexander, S J S G A, as the kids call him. He's just having a hell of a year. He was yeah, All Star before, and I don't know the Thunder. If you look at the Thunder's roster, you would have thought they'd be the worst team in the league by far, and they're somehow not. So props to him on that, dude. That dime, that game winning dime you posted last night on Twitter. Whew. Oh yeah, it's a Dort. Whew. Lou Dort with the dagger. Oh man. I guess on the other side of that, you could say maybe for the Spurs, DeRozan's having a hell of a season. Yeah. But also like they've played 
significantly less games than everyone because of their COVID scare. So it's, I don't know. It's, I, I, I don't know if that plays into it. Maybe there's politics behind the scenes. A lot of players take it personal when they're not named to the All-Star team. Yeah. But I find in every sport, the older people get, the less people care. Yeah, I agree. Unless they, unless they like straight up have never made it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think for a lot of – it's the younger guys. You're right, where it's like Trey Young was talking about it. Tobias Harris was talking about it. And it's like like Chris Paul was named to it. But if Chris Paul wasn't named to the All-Star game, I don't think he'd yeah. care. Because the Suns are really good now. The Suns are like a game behind the Lakers, I think. I, I just think it gets to a point where you realize, like, yeah, it might look good on, like, trying to get into the Hall of Fame or whatever, like, pad their stats that way. But at the end of the day, it's not people you really super respect voting on it. You know what I mean? It's the coaches and the players and the media, everybody combined, I guess. I mean, yeah. I just want to. I, I forget know. coaches have a little say in this the one, too. Coaches pick the, some of the reserves. I just think uh, the way that they do the actual game, though, I want to get into that for a second because I love that they do the East versus West idea for the voting and stuff, but, like, why can't that be the game? I want to go back to that. I disagree. I loved Team Giannis, Team LeBron. I love doing that stuff. I, I would rather them, instead of, like, picking it beforehand, I would love if they just went to this, like, they pick the two captains. All right, it's going to be Durant and it's going to be LeBron this year, right? So they go, and before the game even starts, they just have a straight up line them up, schoolyard. All dare, right, I get AD. Right then and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. I think that'd be so sick. I think it would be cool if the fans could, like, somehow, if there's a fan voting system for how you pick the team or something like that. Because to me, for me watching it, there's obviously the game doesn't matter. It's just a fun experience or whatever. There's no rooting interest any way you look at it. Like, either you're Team LeBron or Team KD, but what if you're not a super big fan of LeBron or KD? Like, I'm a Knicks fan, so I want to cheer for whatever team Julius Randle's on. Right. I would like to go into it being like East versus West. I am going to cheer for the East because I live on the East Coast and watch Eastern basketball teams. Whereas now it's like, if KD takes him, it's like, now I'm cheering for, for Team KD. Or like, if... Then I know this is hard to imagine, but if your team had more than one all-star and they're split up on teams, like, what do you do? You pick one or the other? Like, I, that, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. And I also like it because everyone knows the East has not been the caliber of the West for the past few years now. You know what I mean? Like, I like it because you get to see these cross, the crossing of the stars. It's not just... All the good people on the West. <laughs> like, you know I'd, say, I mean? I'd say looking at the starting five for each, the West has an advantage only because I think uh, the, the guards are better in the West. And then I, I guess when you go to the reserves, I, I think they're significantly better. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It'll be fun. It's just like I don't, I don't, lo- I don't love the whole idea of – the draft and random team assort assignments and stuff. And I, I I disagree. I love that. Because well, then they do the jerseys and it's just like one team solid white, one team solid black. Like throw some color in it, throw some flair. Like, yeah, they could definitely do that up. I don't know if it's a secret or not, but I'm a huge fan of basketball jerseys and the yeah. aesthetic <laughs> of everything. So like, I would like to see some. some no, yeah, you some, can definitely jazz that up, but I don't I don't mind the pick teams idea. And I also don't understand what they're doing with the also with the uh the dunk contest and all that stuff. It's going to be one long event and just the whole night it's going to be like skills competition and whatever then the game. They want to do the dunk contest at halftime. So it's either going to be the shortest dunk contest ever or the longest halftime ever. Yeah. They should just let like you already got LeBron, Levine, Zion all these guys are already there. The guys you'd want to see in a dunk contest, just let them go at it. I know they have, like, the dunk contest. I know they have, like, the three-point shooting thing. I would love to see them bring in kind of, like, that NFL-style, like, how they used to have those, like, quarterback competitions. Like, longest throw. Who can throw it in the farthest bucket? Yeah. Who can, like, you know what I mean? Like, do shit like that. Like, make it fun. They tried a game. They did horse for a while. And I remember Kevin Durant just kept winning the games of horse because he <laughs> would just, like, he'd line up, like, Three uh, across the street and just be like, yeah, okay, try to make that one. And everybody would be like, no, I can't do that. Or I like, mean, you got Steph Curry, Steph Curry hitting shots from the rafters, like my guy. Steph, like, would be, Steph would be his competition, but 
I don't know. I don't know what else they could do. Like, they should just let the Globetrotters, like, have a free game or whatever. Yeah, that'd be sick. I, I don't know. They, I, I don't think it's a good idea to do it at all this year, but make something more fun. You know what else I would love to see? Like, 5.1-on-1s. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, you know what I mean? Just, just like, like LeBron. one and twos. Like, LeBron versus KD, one-on-one, who got it? Yeah, that'd be cool. Or, like, honestly, if you wanted to do it, just, like, we all want to see LeBron and AD versus Kawhi and Paul George. Like, just let that happen for just a minute. Just go. Like, let, let Westbrook and Durant go one-on-one and just punch each other for a while. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, yeah. That, that, that's something I think would be sick. Give the people what they want. And, like, you could even have two games going on, two half courts, like, straight up back in the playground days. Oh, we're like, taking it to 2K, like, on the courts. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would, that would be fun. You could get the three net stars playing against, like, I don't know, just a random assortment of three players. Like You could have Kaidi play Harden. You could have, like, you know, Kaidi. <laughs> I like that. Kaidi versus Harden. <laughs> yeah, here's but. One, here's one. You could get Kyrie and Harden against Steph and KD. Ooh. <laughs> We're just going blacktop, K- 2K blacktop out here. Just bring it back in the old, old day, KD and Steph versus Kyrie and LeBron. <laughs> yeah, just go all the way back. I don't know. I think that there's a lot of stuff they could do with it. I don't, I don't know. All right. Let's get into some other NBA news. What's up next, Mike? Covered snubs. Covered Randall Yay already. Is Luca clutch? Yeah. Luca is very clutch. Did you see his game winner a couple nights ago against the Celtics? I did. That was dope. Because yeah. With like ten seconds left, he hit the three to to put him in position, and then at the buzzer, he's so good. He's getting a lot of hate right now too. I don't know why. He is. Like yeah, like he's like, like I f- like he's getting like that like LeBron effect right now, where there are just some people who love him, and then some people I don't care how good he does, I don't care what stats he puts up. He's just like, nah, he's not the truth. He's just putting together a good run. And it's just like, all right, well, it's been a couple years now, so it's all, always gonna be haters, always gonna be doubters. He he's looking like LeBron in the sense that right now, because Porzingis is hurt, he's carrying that team. Oh yeah, he's having like thirty five points, ten rebounds, nine assists, like nightly. Like, I mean, Hard- Hardaway Jr. scoring for him, but Lucas has the team on his back, and they need to get him someone. Yeah, you remember when Hardaway Jr. was like our number one? Yeah, like <laughs> he, he was like the guy. <laughs> oh my god. He had a pretty good year that year, but like Jesus Christ, um, yeah. But I'm not. I'm not trying to compare them as basketball players, as human beings, whatever. I'm just saying the way people talk about them, like you know what I mean. The perception I'm hearing from people. Do you love him or hate him? And it's like everyone has to love him or hate him, and like some people, like you. There's no one who's just like, yeah, he's alright. There's no one, and it's very, it's. Closer to fifty fifty, I'd say probably sixty forty like hate. You know what I mean? Do you think, but, it's, do you think that's a uh, product of the media putting a lot of spotlight on LeBron and putting a lot of focus on Luca, or do you think that's a product of the way they play, where LeBron and Luca, regardless of how the game's going, they're gonna have the ball in their hands? Because either way, like, does the media put the spotlight on them because of how good they are, or does the spotlight go on them because the ball's just like in their hands? But LeBron doesn't want to take the shot, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Wait, no, I, I. We could pause because we could go into that too because Twitter was really pissed off that Caruso took the the buzzer, the game ending shot against the Heat. But if you watch that final possession, LeBron was looking so badly to take the shot. He just had Jimmy Butler and yeah. someone else, and he had two guys in his face. He had no choice. He had to pass it. And everyone like fucking creams their pants when they watch the fucking. Bulls game where he dishes it off to Steve Kerr for the game winner because oh look he made the decision making to not be selfish and do it like that just like fucking keep that same energy my guy. There's a difference though between Steve Kerr and Alex Caruso. I I'm not saying, I, but I'm just saying like well, we'll, when we when, we'll get to the Lakers in a minute because they're on. but I'm saying like when LeBron does it it's oh he doesn't want the shot when Jordan does it great decision making. I'm gonna dive into LeBron. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. LeBron hypocrisy. Uh, but with Luca, the big thing at Dallas right now is that they're talking about shopping KP. There's been rumors about the Warriors talking about him. I think the Celtics are talking about him. Porzingis and his brother are giving Cuban a hard time. Apparently, he's not very, uh, what's the word, uh, easygoing. 
Oh, who would have thought? Yeah, hmm. It's not like he's fucking caused problems and forced his way out before. It's not like by not extending him... Okay, so I'm not going to go into this hypothetical anymore because I lost myself. But by not hi- by not extending him, the Knicks were able to free up cap space and bring in Julius Randle, our all-star. Yeah. Um, the mo- When the trade happened, everyone was just like, why? Dumb. What are we doing? Heartbroken. Pissed. But right now, we won that trade. We won that trade. Fuck you, Mark Cuban. We got cap <laughs> space. We got Dennis Smith Jr., who we flipped into Derrick Rose. We got picks. We traded one of those picks to men- to Minnesota, and for Minnesota, we were able to draft quickly. So we got quickly, we got rows, we got picks, we got cap space, and we don't have to deal with Porzingis' bullshit anymore. So, yeah, who's always hurt. Always hurt. And the more he's hurt, the more it puts on Luka. Right. And that's why we're seeing Luka hit these buzzer beaters, these game winners. Although... Like it hit me right after that. Like the worse Dallas does, the better the Knicks pick becomes. Right. So like watching him hit that, I was like, "Whoa, that was sick!" And then I was like, "Shit!" Like he should have missed. Yeah. It. Like, why'd you Why'd you make that shot, my guy? Like Luca, just chill. Out. The best. The basketball fan in you was just like, "Fucking let's go!" But like the Knicks fan in you was like, "Son of a fucking." <laughs> it was like watching the Jets win a game. It was like, "Whoa, they can do it!" Let's go! Oh, wait, no, Fuck. we don't want that. <laughs> But not as bad. No, I get that. I get that 100%. No, but Luca, I saw, I came across a, a Twitter, whatever, conversation of who's going to be the best player in five years in the NBA. And it was almost everybody just saying Luca, 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 or trolls being like Brian Scalabrini. <laughs> the bar ball is making a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Never lost. Um, right. What's next up on the old docket there? Lakers tailspin. There we go. Yeah. So uh, last night they got blown out by Utah. That's four out of five now, right? That's four in a row. Five out of six. Oof. And they got games in. They got games coming up against Portland and uh, the Warriors. Without Anthony Davis, the Lakers. Well, it's not just Davis. It's without Davis and without Schroeder. Yeah, I was about to say there's someone else hurting that lineup. Schroeder. So right now, which is big. They're looking like when LeBron was on the Cavs. And it was LeBron just willing his teams to win. Yeah. Except now you have an older LeBron in the Western Conference. And, like, do I think Do I think if anyone's going to right the ship, it's going to be LeBron? So I think, do I think, like, they're not making the playoffs over this? No. But it is, it is very troublesome to see just how much of a difference AD did make on that team. Um, Especially because, like we said, this is something that can turn into something bigger in the snap of your fingers. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, right now, Clippers are looking like probably the big favorite in the West, I'd say. No, I mean, look who they just lost to, Utah. True. Utah, Utah's <sighs> gone from this team where, like, I thought they were just just good because they were winning the against who they were playing. But yeah. now it looks like they're really just winning they've won 17 in a row at home I just, they're, they're just blowing teams out you have mitchell conley and clarkson that's like a lethal trio of guards no i agree rudy but g can play defense against the yeah, best centers. Rudy, rudy gobert like as much as he's like everyone hated him for a little bit because yeah um <laughs> he just like i don't know just it's gonna be I'm going to be probably all year not being sold on Utah, even when they're, like, fucking 70 and, like, 8. Like <laughs> the thing with them is they reminded me of the 2015 Atlanta Hawks. Right. Where it was, like, they might have a better record than LeBron's team, but when LeBron plays them in the playoffs, it's like, how many, how many years in a row did we see the Raptors with DeMar DeRozan play really well, and I love DeMar DeRozan. This yeah. A shot at him. This is, like, that, that team, because we saw it with, the Bulls when Derrick Rose was Derrick Rose and Nate Robinson was on the team. And like these teams will end up with better records than LeBron James. But then LeBron swept the Raptors. LeBron beats the Bulls. LeBron beats the Hawks. Yeah, the Jazz beat them by like twenty something last night without Davis and, and Schroeder. But if it comes to a playoff series, I'm gonna take the Lakers. Yeah, hundred percent. Because LeBron, even though he's like he says he's over that load management thing, like he wants to be there for the people who want to see him, blah, 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 blah. 
which I think he might take a little more this year since there's not really fans in the stadium, you know what I mean? But he also just, he kind of just, like, he plays hard because that's just who he is, but he gets through the regular season, and then he flips that switch in the playoffs. Yeah. Which is pretty much most people in the NBA at this point because yeah, the regular just... season, it's like, whose line is it anyway? NBA basketball, where the regular season doesn't matter and the points are blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make this crystal clear. There is a certain demographic of people who like paying attention to the regular season because we gamble. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Oh, I was going to just chime in and say Knicks fans because they like heart, heart, heartache. Yeah, true. Nick true. fans too. Well, Nick fans also like the regular season because that's all we got. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's all we get to see them in. Like that's all it is. Um, there is no postseason. What's that? Um, uh, but speaking of LeBron with the load management, it's become a huge topic on ESPN. Is LeBron playing too much? He's leading the league in minutes per game at an older age. Since Anthony Davis has gone out, he's been playing close to forty minutes a game. <laughs> Bro, I. I hate the basketball media, especially when it comes to LeBron. It's the worst. Because they are the biggest fucking hypocrites. Exactly. He sits out. Oh, my God. This guy he doesn't care about the fans. Blah, 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 blah. He plays every game. He plays 40 minutes in every game. Oh, my God. He's he's gonna, he's just fucking it up for his whole franchise. He's playing too much. Like, exactly. fucking just no one to sit down. This is exactly what you were going with with Luca. is that with LeBron, regardless, there's no there's no pleasing everybody. Yeah. Because he, like you just said, when he when he was sitting resting, taking load management games, or whatever, everybody's pissed off. Now he's playing constantly, playing too much. Is it too many minutes for LeBron? There's no winning for him. He's always gonna there's always gonna be a corner of people against him. And that's what it started to look like with Luca. I don't think he's playing too much. Like if he like if he doesn't play the Lakers aren't just losing. The Lakers are getting blown out. Blown out. They had to go to double overtime to beat the Pistons. They had two games in a row against the Thunder go to overtime. They lost in overtime to the Wizards. Like, LeBron's putting in all of these minutes, and they're not winning against bad teams. Right. They're, they're struggling right now. Do they make a trade before the deadline? It's, like, it's hard for me because... Anthony Davis is still such an unknown right now. You know what I mean? Right. And I think everything on that team has to be based off Anthony Davis right now. Like, unless LeBron gets hurt, because then that obviously changes fucking the entire fucking playbook. But if AD gets over this and he's good for the rest of the season, I think they're set. You know what I mean? But if this is something he's going to have to deal with, they might need to figure something out. But do you make a do you make a move just to have the insurance policy because the deadline's coming up? And let's say the, the deadline is right after the All Star break, and then the playoffs start. They announced for whatever reason the end of May, push it back a month. But for those two months, if Davis gets hurt again, you're kind of fucked because you can't just add a player. But who would you who would you go for? I don't know. I mean, I th- I Boogie Cousins just got released. I could see him going there. Their talks. I mean, we the same people we've been talking about. You know, Andre Drummond. Where does he go? Blake Griffin. Where does he go? Um, John Collins of the Hawks. Where does he go? I think they can find a way to get one of these big guys just to have, even if it's a buyout. Like Blake Griffin has a huge contract. The Pistons aren't going anywhere. I could see the Pistons just buying him out and letting him go where he wants. I could see Boogie Cousins who just got bought out by the Rockets saying, hey, I've been chasing rings for the last three years. Like, I want another ring. Home back there. I could definitely see them adding a big man, and I think they might need to because right now they're third. The Clippers are in front of them. The Suns are just, like I said, the Suns are just behind them. The Suns are possibly going to take them. And not that home court's going to matter that much because we don't know what the playoff is. It could be a bubble. It could be – we have yeah. no idea. We have no idea. We, yeah. But regardless, you'd rather be higher up because you'd rather play a team like the Pelicans or the, whoever's sneaking in at the eighth seed right. than a team like the Blazers shit. who are oh, actually shit, looking really buddy. good. Yeah, oh, and shit. like I 100% agree with you, but uh, it depends on what you're giving up. Because like, to get one of these big-name guys, you're going to have to give up like Kuz probably, something like a decent like up-and-coming piece at the very least. With some picks. Like, I don't think they care about the picks as much right now. I'm so, like, I I, I don't get Kuz. You don't I, like Kuz? I don't dislike Kuz. 
I just think like he's a very good role player, and that's his ceiling. I don't see him being the star player. Like with the whole Anthony Davis trade, the Lakers did not want to give up Kuzma. They were like, Lonzo Ball, sure, take him. Brandon Ingram, sure, take him. Kuzma's where we draw the line. Brandon Ingram was an all-star last year. Lonzo Ball could be an all-star, maybe not this year, but very soon. Like yeah. These are guys that I think have such a higher potential than Kuzma. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just overvaluing him. Um, Undervaluing. I, I I agree with Ingram. I'm not sold on Lonzo, though. Maybe not Lonzo. I would take Lonzo over Kuzma. Really? I'd probably That's take Kuzma. That's funny, bro. I don't know. Hey, yeah, I just it. don't. I, I like them both hey, a lot, though. I, the Lakers are always on national TV. They're going to be on tomorrow night, I think. I, I watch them a lot, and I just don't watch Kuzma and see this guy who's like, he's, he's a star if you can get behind it. You know, get in the right situation. I just don't think that's him. Also, I hate Alex Caruso. Yeah, but but like, <laughs> just that's not gonna be a good bargaining chip. I'm sorry. I'm just, no, no, no. This has nothing to do with like a trading piece. Like talking about trading, I'm just saying like all of the internet loves Alex Caruso, but to me, Bleacher Report has just just made it not funny. It's one of those things that's like it started out as a funny meme or funny joke because like he's this bald white guy that doesn't look like an athlete. And then Bleacher Report's just dedicating, like, 30% of their content to Alex Caruso gifts and memes. And it's just like, I don't want to see Alex Caruso at all anymore. Yeah. Um, I like Alex Caruso, but, like, I get what you're, I get what you're saying. Just, like, the people are going ham on it. It's too much. It's too much. It's like... If you're you... oversaturating the market. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We need to undersaturate the Alex Caruso market. <laughs> all right. Where are we going next, Mike? Oklahoma bar fight. And now, for the main event of the evening. Live from an Oklahoma bar bathroom. It is time. Here we have two fighters. One is a college football player for the University of Oklahoma football team. And the other is a random kid he started picking on in the bathroom. All right. So we're going to take... We're going to take a look at this viral video. We're going to give it a little reaction. I'm going to break it down a little bit. That was Eric Buffer right there. Eric Buffer, dude. dude. Just the long lost brother. The, the golden oh, pipe. Shit, Did you know that uh, Michael Bucker, Buffer and Bruce Buffer are brothers? Yeah, of course. But, That's a genetic. Voices are genetic. But they didn't know about each other until they were in like their 30s. Their dad just, I guess, had an affair or something. <laughs> How did they not know about each other? They got the same voice. Well, yeah. Apparently, Bruce like, Buffer saw Michael Buffer, like, at a boxing event and, like, went to his mom. It's just like... He sounds like me. Yeah. And p- <laughs> apparently, like, went to his mom and was like, am I related to this guy? Like, he has... And then he, they broke down the whole story. Apparently, his dad, like, had, like, an affair or something or, like, a family before this family. And, like, they didn't meet each other till they were, like, 30. <laughs> That's the 30 for 30 we all need. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, this isn't a 30 for 30, but we are breaking down the bar fight scene around the college football world. The viral video of the week. Chris is an MMA guy who knows an awful lot about fighting. So, oh, let's break it down. So, we start off. See these guys get into a little confrontation. People are drunk. You know, to what happens. They're in the bathroom, which is just kind of weird. Why are you picking a fight in the bathroom? Well, and right what? there, right there is where it gets me. You see the MMA guy trying to be like, you know what, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Because people who know fighting know I'm not going to get into a fucking street fight because bad things happen in fucking street fights. Well, he's also very aware that there's a camera on it. Yeah. And that raises the question of, one... Why do you have a camera on you in the bathroom if you don't expect a fight? I think they were probably just going at it, and hey, some he, random bystander was just like, he knew, hey. He, he knew it was coming. Yeah. Also, no one in the video is wearing a mask. Come on, be better. Yeah. Be better. Be better than that. But so, yeah, right there, his friend comes up while he's looking away. So I honestly think he believes it was the receiver, even though it wasn't. It was his boy that just came out of the side. But if you come over and smush my face, it's over. It's over. I'm a rational human being. I'm the one who's breaking up my drunk friends when they, like, some guys are being assholes to them and they're trying to get into it. I'm not this guy. Mike Tyson once said, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the face. You touch this kid's face. Yeah. Like, but it's I, out. So I'm a rational guy. I don't like, I'm not going to get into a bar fight with you. You smush my face. Like, I'm seeing red. I'm going black. And 
it's just going to be bad. So we'll just start there. Keep it moving. You see him? Okay, right there. First thing he does, takes his face, pushes it to get it into position to land that big right hand, and then just starts fucking going to work. So he takes a couple hits. He's going in. Second he, second he gets close, he shoots in for the takedown. White sweatshirt, we're calling him Fake Ben because he's ben, he looks like Ben Askins. We're calling him Fake Ben and the football player. So Fake Ben, he starts pressuring in, gets in, shoots in for the shot, sees he's not going to get in on the legs, switches to a body lock. Beautiful technique. Guy puts his arm over. Not the right move. You want to circle into that, start fighting the hands of my guy. You're just about to get tossed. And there it is. The toss. Excellent takedown. And then, right into mount. Right into mount. And then what's beautiful about this, and I don't think the cameraman meant to do this, but the second fight also comes into, into the shot. Because right now you have, I, you can't even see their faces, but there's a blue sweatshirt and a gray sweatshirt, and they're clearly going at it too. The face smusher and fake Ben's friend. <laughs> it's a tag team event. It's almost like MMA. I mean, it's almost like WWE. Straight into, straight into a body lock. <laughs> straight again. These guys got to be better, my guy. So keep it moving. Straight into mount, automatically starts taking the back, lays down some ground and pound to soften him up, open up the neck, hooks in right away. Beautiful technique from everyone. <laughs> Beautiful technique. Shout this out guy, to this guy. Yeah, this he's guy's like, just like, he tries you know to what? grab his hood, be like, hey, buddy, don't do this. No. Nope. So he's got a drink in his hand. He's like, you know what? I, I came to pee, and that's the only thing I came here for. I don't want any of this. I'm out. <laughs> he looks like he might try to like break it up for a second, then he's like, you know what? Too much for me. Too much for me. <laughs> All right. Keep it moving. Laying in the ground and pound. Takes his back. Goes in for the rear naked. Shout out to the guy <laughs> yelling guillotine when it's not a guillotine. <laughs> Obviously not a guillotine. But hooks in. I appreciate the excitement, though. Hooks in. Might have a body triangle there. I can't really tell from this angle. Just to lock in position. Goes directly for the rear naked. Solid technique. Solid technique. Oh, I this like, guy. I like the up punches. You can't, you, he's literally, literally going out swinging. Yeah, but just to anyone ever finding yourself into this position, when you have, when he has the hooks in or the legs like that, he is nullifying your hips. Nothing you touch him with is even going to hurt him. It's, it's not even going to register with that much adrenaline. Don't do that. You want to fight the hands. Just throwing shots up like that is not going to help your situation. Keep it moving even forward. He starts slipping off the side. He recognizes it, comes around. Grabs the arm to control the arm, just giving him even better position. So from here, he can either work around into a straight mount and just start laying down fucking elbows. Or if the guy starts turning into turning his back to him again, he just goes back. Perfect positioning. Great technique. Controlling the arm, controlling the arm, stretching him out, his core is oh, out. Wait. Wait, oh. we got a flying update from the <laughs> other fight happening. Yeah, monster is takedown. Looks like he was starting to go for some type of toss. Ended up switching it into a trip. Guy's head goes directly into the concrete wall. So I, we didn't even get a, we didn't even get looks at these guys to get names or faces or anything. But it looks like white. I'm guessing white hoodie is friends with fake Ben Askren, and blue hoodie is friends with the football player. Yes, gotcha. Blue hoodie is the face smusher. Okay, so face smusher and football player are just taking L's up and down this bathroom. Oh, just not doing well. Not doing well. See, he starts to transition. Now he's in full mount. Guy starts starts laying down the <laughs> ground and pound. Gives up his back. Starts laying in huge shots. Shout and it was over kid. from there. Shout out to that kid for wearing Adidas track pants to a bar. Yo, I don't give a fuck. Adidas track pants are the most comfortable things on the planet. <laughs> I, I'd wear those anywhere. I don't care what I look like. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he probably wore them thinking like, hey, if an altercation breaks out, I'm in more athletic gear than you are. Yeah, so fuck around, find out. Fake Ben Askren, from what I've like rumors I've seen on the internet, he's like a ten-year MMA trained guy, and you could tell like he was proper positioning, proper transitions. When the back gave itself up, he took it. When the mount gave itself up, he took it. He just he was he looked great in those scrambles. And Oklahoma City guy, like, learn some wrestling, my guy. It's learned hard. Some it, it's hard to tell <laughs> from the video because it's a little grainy. But a, a pro tip to just anyone out there at any given moment, if you're in a bar fight or a, any altercation, first thing you do is you check the ears. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> somebody's got big, fat cauliflower ears on both sides of their heads. They're probably 
a wrestler, boxer, some form of MMA. You don't want to start a fight with them. But you, you can't even do that anymore because, like, I do jiu-jitsu. I do wrestling. I did wrestling in high school. Like, my ears are fine because if you wear the per- the proper protective gear, it doesn't happen. And if you get it hit, like, what happens is you get some sort of damage to your ear. It swells with blood. If you go to the doctor and just they stick it a needle, drain that shit, your ears are fine. It's when you just don't do anything about it, it calcifies. Right, but what you're saying is not all MMA fighters have cauliflower ear. Yeah. But all people with cauliflower ear are some form of fighter. Probably, yes. If you see, if you, if you see somebody at a cauliflower if you see somebody at a bar with cauliflower ear, you can't go up to them and be like, this dude plays chess, so let me yeah. just fuck his day up. So, yeah, definitely if you see the cauliflower ear, like, definitely be careful there. But, you know, you can't just be like, oh, no cauliflower ear. This guy doesn't know shit. You're going to you're gonna find out you might be wrong. Yeah, <laughs> MMA has changed the bully game forever because you can't just pick on people and assume that they can't kick your ass. Yeah. Lesson learned. Shout out to the... Fake Ben Askren for standing up for him and his buddy, and his buddy coming over the top with the flying takedown. Like, and like I said from the beginning, you see MMA guys like they're like yeah, there's gonna be asshole outliers in anything, but for the most part, people who are trained are just like, look, I know the consequences that can come from this. Let's just not fucking do this. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And he tried. He tried his absolute hardest. To like be like, okay, buddy, you know, you're cool, you're cool. Don't smush somebody's face. I'm like, I, that's, so the like, question <laughs> is, this kid's going viral for fighting. Could he take on the other viral superstar fighter, Jake Paul? Based off this minute-long clip. Hands, no. no. Straight boxing, I would not say. Because, like, he landed some good shots, but he was, he was throwing a, He was angry. He was probably had a few drinks in him, so he was throwing a little wild. I'm not trying to... He was undersized, though, so I think he knew his best shot was to just go ground. Yeah, but you saw he used those shots to get in. Second he had, he went for the shot. Couldn't realize he wasn't in position to make the shot. Didn't have the room. Straight to the body lock. I wonder if this kid's going to be like somewhere out there. They find they, like, He gets found by a small promotion and starts to blossom an MMA career because of a viral video. Hey. Crazier things have happened. Oh, definitely. Do you remember the... Jake Paul knocking out Nate Robinson a couple weeks ago? Well, yeah. not that one. <laughs> there was a viral video, like, last year, like, I think, like, right before COVID, like, maybe a few months before. Um, this is essentially how Kimbo Slice got his career. Yeah, kind of. But um, same with Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal, actually, his first, like, on-screen fight was in a backyard Kimbo promotion fight. Nice. He, he beat up Kimbo's protege. Beat him up. And it was it looked like you fighting me. Like that was the size difference. <laughs> like <laughs> And Massivedal was the smaller guy and beat him up. Yeah, shout out short kings. But um Yeah, it was just trying to not do it and just assholes are assholes. Don't smush my face. <laughs> Gotta be smarter than that, my guy. And Oklahoma receiver, you're the one who has everything to lose. You're the one who like I don't even know your name. I'm sorry. I just know you're a receiver for Oklahoma. I don't think he's a star player or anything. And I yeah, but not. even not being a star player, you're the one that if anyone's going to know you, going to be you. True. You, you win. It looks bad on you for the school. You could lose a scholarship. You could lose your spot on the team, especially if you're not a big star. Like, there's consequences that come from this. You lose. This video currently has 8.2 million views. And that's just this places video of it. Yeah, so there's who knows where there's nineteen other million of them, each with at the very minimum two two point five million views. Yeah, so it's been making the rounds. It's been online, it's been on the ESPN and stuff. So you gotta be smarter than that. Like, we're adults. Are we still doing this whole bully shit? Yeah, like, I don't know. He's probably like a nineteen year old kid. I, I wouldn't call him an adult yet. Anybody still in college, I wouldn't call him an adult just yet, but All right, but still like No, you're right though. He's got be he's better. gotta be smarter. Yeah. And also, none of them are wearing masks. Wear your mask. Yeah. Just Idiot. stop being a dick. I want to go into the other big fight of the week. This one's sanctioned. We've, we've, had, we've had a little trend this week of doing sanctioned and unsanctioned fights for the last couple episodes. Um, so this episode, I just want to talk about the Curtis Blades, Derek Lewis knockout. Um, Derek Lewis slept Curtis Blades. Slept him. Huge upset. 
just big uppercut. Hit that at a plus 350. Snaps for me. <laughs> Shmoney dance. Actually, we can't do the money dance anymore. Shmur is free. Anyways. Um, I, I can't do any dance to begin with, so it's all good for me. <laughs> but yeah, he just... It was a big knockout, and great for Derek Lewis. We all know he's that guy. Can sleep anyone from anywhere. Just He's always looking for that big shot. It's just his style of fighter he is. That's why he's so exciting. I want to talk about the knockout itself, though. Because after the initial strike, the uppercut on the shot, as he went to the ground, before the ref could get there, he landed two more big strikes. And I just want to make it clear, I hate seeing things like this. Like, I understand where you're just kind of in, like, the throes of battle and blah, 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 blah. And you're supposed to go to the whistle. In this case, you're supposed to go to the ref stops it. We've seen plenty of cases where guys were like, try to do knock up, like walk offs, and then the guy gets back up. So I get it. I also understand that Curtis Blades was sleep. Mm. He was not getting up. So you you think Derek Lewis knew he was just yes. it, it was unnecessary. Yes. So I just want to preference this whole conversation with I do think they were unnecessary. I do think he probably should have controlled himself. I do agree in all these areas. But I do not like that Derek Lewis is catching flack for this when you have guys like Jorge Masvidal, when you got have guys like Dan Henderson who have literally made their names off of this same exact act. Jorge Masvidal in the Ben Askren fight comes in, hits that big flying knee. Ben is the stiffest I've ever seen someone go stiff in any fight. Mm. The next closest is probably this last knockout with Curtis Blades now because he went stiff, stiff too. But to the point where like he fell and he was still kind of propped up because his body just was so stiff, there was no give. You know what I mean? He didn't fall flat. He was literally propped himself up because all his mother muscles just stiffened up. Like rigor mortis. It's creepy. Yeah. And then Jorge dives in and lands two more massive shots. So my question is also, do you think this is on the refs to an extent for not getting in there quick enough? Yeah, but you also have to understand MMA is the only sport where the game can, even though it's not a game, but let's just for the sake of argument, the game can end at any second throughout the game. There's no other game. Right. There's no other sport that does that. No, that's true, right. Um, so, it's hard. These guys are kind of in the throw. Derek Lewis wasn't, like, he wasn't really throwing because I will say for Curtis Blades, his striking looks a lot better. He was... He was using a lot of fakes. He was using a lot of lateral movement. He was doing different things just to kind of give Derek Lewis all these things to think about. And he was doing great. On the technical side where I saw the breakdown for Curtis Blades is lateral movement. Fakes, 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 fakes. About to go for a shot. Stops. Dives right in. You know what I mean? Like he was using all these fakes and lateral movement and showing these different things until it went to what he wanted to do, which was the takedown where he just kind of stopped on the center line and took his shot. Right. But isn't the job of like a Herb Dean or big John McCarthy, isn't that like their sole job is to know when to stop the fight? Because there have been times where you'll see, I, I can't think of a specific example, but I, there are times where a ref will stop a fight and it might seem premature and Joe Rogan and whoever else is announcing the fight will get upset. But then, which it sounds like here is that the, it's not so much that the ref's getting there too late, but it seems like there's shots that shouldn't be landed, or not shots, there's strikes that shouldn't be landing that are. Yes, yes and no. Just because usually when you see these things where it's like stop too early, it's like a TKO situation, not an actual KO situation. Right. A TKO is kind of like, you're just eating big shots. You're not really defending yourself. You're not all there. You might still be conscious, but you're just not in the right state of mind to defend yourself. This knockout situation, it was a flash knockout. And Herb Dean did get in there relatively quickly. It's just Derek Lewis was quicker. You know what I mean? That's fair. That's why one's a fighter and one's a ref. Um, so I don't... That sounded so mean. Herb Dean, don't kill me. Um, 
So I don't put this super on Herb. He he did the best he could. He tried to get in there as fast as he could once he recognized what was going on. You know what I mean? And, like, I get it. Throws a battle. Like, you're just going. And like I said, I don't like seeing it. But my biggest thing is you have Jorge Masvidal. He does his thing. They ask him after the fight, were those shots really necessary? He replies with his now super famous line, super necessary. And there are hashtags, shirts, whatever, built, built off this super necessary line because mm. it was supposed to be the coolest thing or whatever. He also says that he likes to send his opponents to the shadow realm. <laughs> and if that's not intimidating as fuck, I don't know what But is. the point I'm trying to get to is... Derek's catching flack for doing the same thing Jorge Masvidal doing, did. Um, Dan Henderson did the same thing to Michael Bisping. Lands the H-bomb. He literally jumps off the ground, leaves his feet to deliver a flying just shot down to him where the silhouette of that shot has literally become Dan Henderson's logo. It's right. literally all the branding it's Dan all Henderson. Branding. It's all marketing. It's all the branding Dan Henderson has. I think and it's the same thing Derek Lewis did, but everyone's coming after Derek Lewis for doing you're it. You're answering your own question, though. There's nothing that can be sold off of Derek Lewis doing it. Where when Henderson does it, it becomes his brand. When Masvidal does it, it becomes his brand. There's shirts. There's money to be made off but of it. But why can't it become Derek Lewis's brand? Why is he getting see, th- backlash is- and everyone coming after him when he could market it the same way? I don't know. I, I mean, He could market it as this big killer. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. It's another kind of situation where the white guy and the... Well, it's Mas- what's Masvidal? Masvidal's Cuban, but he has that, like, Scarface vibe that the white people like, you know what I mean? Like, they like to get behind that because they like that movie. Yeah. But the big, scary black guy does it now, and now people have a problem with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. That's fair. That's, that's my whole thing that just it kind of ticks me off about this whole situation. He didn't do anything these guys haven't done before and again i don't like seeing it either way i'm not saying Derek lewis sh- should have hit the guy i'm not saying mess all should have hit the guy i'm not saying hendo should have hit the guy right but why is one situation worse than the other it's not even worse being true two, like two situations are being celebrated and one situation is being talked about like it's one of the biggest travesties in sports right you know what i mean like it's, again, I'm a very keep that same energy guy. Like, if I'm going to be mad at something, like, if I'm going to be mad at something some rando did, if Eric did the same thing, I'm going to be just as mad as Eric. It's true. It's true. You know what I mean? So, that that's the whole thing in this situation that just is eating me to my fucking core right now. <laughs> yeah, clearly. It's not sitting well with you. And you're right. There's a lot to be said there where it just seems like, Across sports in general, a black athlete does not get the same treatment, leeway. the same leeway as other athletes when it comes to things just in general. Yeah. In general. Um, and Echoing off, like we were talking about Draymond's comments last week, like just stuff like that. Just Well, I think it ties into where I was going with Cam Newton was, um, you know, the whole situation with Cam Newton is that. He had a football camp and a player, a high school player was being rude and disrespectful to Kim. And Kim kind of got into it with him. Not not like, you know, in a mean way, but Kim was kind of just. I mean, all he really said was, hey, I'm rich. <laughs> well, yeah, but Kim was basically saying, like, you are a 15 or 16 year old kid. I am a former MVP. Like, stay in your lane. Like, yeah. chill out. And people are giving Kim a hard time for it. But you know for a fact if Tom Brady had a football camp and a 15 year old was talking to Tom Brady like that and Tom Brady literally just smacked him everybody would be like yeah brady was right to do that yeah 100 percent. it's the same thing where because cam newton's a black athlete for him to be able to to speak to the youth like that like where do you, i mean what is this kid that who is this kid that he's going to talk to cam newton like that where Derek lewis does the same thing that other people have done and when Derek lewis does it it's an issue right and because we know cam newton's not the first football player to to talk shit at a football camp yeah he's just Maybe he did it on camera. Maybe he didn't right. go about it the right way, but it's the same same story. Yeah, and also just on that whole thing, that kid needs to shut the fuck up a little bit, a little bit. Well, that kid's <laughs> an idiot because 
somebody made a really good point of like, if this kid is serious about like being recruited and going D one and stuff, you don't think all of these coaches know who Cam Newton is? Like, for Cam Newton went to Florida, won a championship there with Tebow assist in front of him, and then went to Auburn, won a championship there. So that rules also out... went to a JUCO before that. Yeah, like... so that, but that rules out those two SEC schools. They're clearly not interested in this kid if he's disrespecting Cam. Like, you don't think Cam can just call up his teammates and coaches and stuff? Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm well, not, the, I'm the not kid... saying it's like Mean Girl situation, but like, kid, you're burning bridges. But well, the kid did release one of those iPhone Note apologies that everyone releases now for Twitter. Well, there you go. It's better. It's all solved. But, like, yeah, like, but from the way the note sounded, like, he's, like, this camp, like, he brought in players from, like, this, like, competitive, like, seven-on-seven league. Yeah. So, I think this kid's, like, he might be getting kicked out of the league. He I, might be. He's he's blackballing himself. Yeah, by he's doing made this. himself so many more problems, yeah. which is another thing. Kids, I understand the internet's cool. And, like, you can turn followers into monetary things. And, like, we get that. We do that. Like, we get that world. you got to stop doing stupid things for clout. Stop chasing clout. Like, I'm sorry. Because that's all this kid was doing. He knew if he went, got himself on video, going after Cam Newton, it was going to go crazy. Oh, in his head, he was like, this is going to get my name out there. People are going to watch this and be like, wow, this kid spoke up to Cam. He called him a free Let's agent. Let's see how cool he is. Like, Let's look at his mixtapes and see where he's blah, blah, blah. And, like, he thought he was really going to make a name for himself. And we are referring to him as this kid because nobody knows who he is. Nobody cares who he is. And that's the thing. Everyone does know you for all the wrong reasons now. But nobody knows his name. Even, even like, ESPN, all these people talking about it, they're just, like, the kid. But nobody like, knows who he is. But kid, like you said, those SEC coaches, I'm sure they know his they name. They know who he is. Yeah, that's the thing. If you're a coach and you're looking at this kid and you're like, He's going to talk shit to a guy who was the MVP, a guy who has been to a Super Bowl. Has absolutely no respect for the person trying to help him. Literally. You know, like right? a coach. That's, yeah, it's fucked up. I mean, yeah. And, and it, like, even just going beyond that, look at this YouTuber who died a few weeks ago. He's trying to play a prank, a robbery plank, coming at a guy with butcher knives. Well, yeah, that's just. And get shot. Stop doing things. Stop doing stupid things for clout. Like, yeah, pranks can be funny. You play dumb games, you win dumb prizes. You go up to somebody with a fake knife, you just, I mean, even if it's a real, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Bad idea. Bad idea, kids. Bad idea. And it's not like it was, like, his mom, who he knows is not going to have a gun on her. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're doing it to randos. You don't know. You yeah. don't know. This guy could have had his own knife. This guy obviously had his own gun. Russian, like It's Russian roulette. You're just taking gambles, but that's a little more extreme than talking yeah, shit no, to Yeah, th- no, this is these are two extremes of the same idea. You're doing something stupid that's going to ruin your future just for views, for clout. For cl- like just I understand clout is a very marketable thing in today's in today's day and age, but there are other ways to get it that might require a little more work. Yeah, like, if you really, if you, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you wanted to become a rapper, and you wanted to build some clout for yourself, you could just get the number 69 tattooed on yourself 69 times and dye your hair rainbow. That's a good way to get clout. The whole firing guns and pretending to be a gangster thing, and maybe he is a gangster, and arrested for sexual deviance, and all sorts of, all the other things that he did, maybe not the best way to go about it, but the tattoos and hair was something. You're really. I'll show myself you, out. You're you're really going after six nine. I'll show myself out. You're going after six nine. I'm, 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 after the love fest for stitches you had, dude, One episode ago. I love six nine. I was literally. <laughs> he, he turned himself into a character. No, what I'm saying is, if you want to be. A, so did stitches. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you want to turn yourself into a character and like be an outrageous, outlandish person, that's one thing. But if you're gonna be disrespectful. That's that's not a good idea. If you're going to be blatantly dangerous, then that's really stupid. And but also just using these examples that we just brought up in Six Nine and Stitches, you will get clout. You will get to a certain level, but you will never be respected. You will never be oh, fact. You, like Six Nine or Stitches are never going to be Jay Z, Nas, you know, Biggie, Tupac, like these people who are revered as the next level, the elite of the elite. 
Well, right, because those are guys who are actually focused on harnessing their craft as opposed to being entertainers and just being popular. Like, exactly. Bring it back to sports and football. This kid is going down kind of like a Johnny Manziel route where Johnny Manziel was more concerned about being, you know, the money get team and, and Johnny football and partying with Drake and stuff and didn't, like, focus on being the Cleveland Brown. And, like, there also is a happy medium because, like, if you look at, like, Baker Mayfield, per se. Speaking of Cleveland Browns. Right. Everyone was giving him shit, like, oh, he's going down the Johnny Manziel route. He's doing so many commercials. But when he wasn't doing the commercials. Well, and, the, and the DUI and the talking shit to Ohio State. Like, yeah, no. No, 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 yeah. But I'm just saying, for Baker Mayfield, like, yeah, he was doing all the commercials. He was doing all this stuff outside. He was going to games and, like, chugging beers and, like, yeah. doing, like, making himself the popular guy. But when he was not on these off times doing these little things, he was focused on his craft. He and he's had work. his best year he's had this he year. Put in the work, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's over for this kid. We don't know. I don't know yeah. how talented he is. I'm, I'm it's, not it's, trying to, like... He's burning bridges that he isn't even close to crossing yet and is fucked up because it's camp. I just want him and other kids who might be put in this situation to appreciate, A, the opportunity given by going to, like, a Cam Newton camp or something like that, and to just understand the impact that you just had on your life on doing something. Yeah, yeah, by doing something like this. I want this kid to learn from this mistake, go on, be the next Randy Moss or the next Tom Brady or the next whatever position he plays. You know what I mean? Like, I want that for this kid. Like, because he's a kid. He made a mistake. I get it. Like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, this kid should never play. But you have to make better decisions, especially if you're going into a profession that's so in the limelight. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, let's go into some other football stuff because some football stuff happened while we've been not talking about football. We all we all knew it was happening. Carson Wentz is officially on the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I uh why did they fire Doug Peterson then? Because the whole situation was like <sighs> Wentz made it clear to the owners and he was like, Look, I'm not talking to him. Fuck him. I don't want to be part of this team. I want to be with the Colts. So they bring the Colts old, I mean, they bring the Colts offensive coordinator in to be the head coach. And then they still sent him to the Colts. So I don't, like, well, the, the Colts pe- Eagles are, like, blending lines of where the Colts and Eagles end and where the other one begins. Apparently, I read a story that the Doug Peterson thing happened because Doug Peterson was like, hey, Carson's my guy. And the ownership was like, well, Carson isn't our guy. Oh, I heard the flip. I heard that Howie Roseman, the GM of the Eagles, was so in love with Wentz that he was like, you're going to put Wentz, like Wentz is going to be the guy going forward. We're not going to use Hurts. And Peterson was kind of just like, I want to be the guy that makes the shots. I mean, he calls the shots. I want to be the guy who makes the decision. And that's where the disagreement went. All I know is the Eagles are kind of a dumpster fire right now. Well, I'm from what I heard, same play of just Doug Peterson where they didn't want when they didn't want Carson. Doug Peterson was just like, "Look, I, I'm tired of just letting everyone make my decisions for me." Yeah. You know what I mean? It sounds like a lot of micromanaging going on behind the scenes, and that goes back to the last game of the season when they pulled Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter. And Peterson was very quiet about it, and the players were pissed about it. But some players, like Travis Kelsey, came out and said, like, he thought there was something going on where it wasn't Peterson making the call. Seems like the Eagles' ownership and front office is really just micromanaging. Just, micro, just, just got to step back and just got to chill out. Let hire a coach. Let the coach do their jobs. But um, look at look at what the Jets are doing. The other way they did that for years. Maybe not to this level, but they. The whole point was that you'd go there and everything had to go through Woody and no one liked that. They're finally seeming to just let Joe Douglas, let uh, Sala right now, like, do their thing. And it look we're talking about them way more optimistically than we have in the last probably eight. Right. <laughs> uh, but just to go back to the Wentz trade, Carson Wentz going to the cult. What does this mean for the cult? Where do you does this make them better? Does this make them worse? Do they people say this makes them 
title contender. People say it doesn't improve them. What What is your take on it? I think it all depends on if Frank Reich was really the thing that made Carson Carson. Because Carson had his best years under Frank Reich. Right. We know this. Right. They just have a good repertoire together. So if that's really the thing, and maybe just Doug Peterson wasn't, like, just the right fit for Carson, you know what I mean? I think, yeah, they got probably, like, a young Philip Rivers-esque, you know what I mean? More mobile. He's stepping into the, yeah, picking up uh, what Phillip's left behind. I think when you look at the Eagles, the bi- obviously the big problem was that he had no time in the pocket. He was the most pressured quarterback on average. He's going from arguably the worst line in football to statistically the best line in football. Right. Where he's going to be behind Reggie Nelson, and they have a great rush game with Jonathan Taylor. They're going to have Marlon Mack healthy. You have T.Y. might be gone, but they have Michael Pittman, and they have a great defense. And you look at the rest of that division, you're going to have two games against Houston. Houston's going to be garbage. You have two games against the Jags, who might be better, but they're still not going to be very good. And the Titans still have no defense. I think the Colts very much so in position to win that division next year. And if the defense is as good, as if the defense can play just about as good as they played this previous season, I think they can make a run because we haven't seen Carson Wentz actually have an offensive line in about three years. And to be fair, to be fair to the Colts, this is kind of a win-win for them just because even if he's not that good, as long as they figure that out within 70% of the snaps that Carson could be available for this year, they gave up a third and a second. Right. It's not like they gave up the house. Well, that's the thing. If they... If they really mortgage their future in the way that the Rams did to go all in, we'd be talking about this a lot different. Right. This was a we can get him because he wants to be here situation, and the Eagles had no leverage because the right. Eagles knew that Carson Wentz wanted to go there. The fact that they got the conditional second is and big. I also think there's a very reasonable chance that the Eagles don't get the conditional second only because the Colts sit Carson Wentz just to make the math work out. Well, because that's a controversy that's happening in baseball, but we'll get to that another day. Well, the stipulation of it, it's either he plays 75% of the snaps and it turns into a first, or if he plays at least 70% of the snaps and they make the playoffs. Okay. Then they get the first. So it looks like they're going to get a first out of it because I very much see that team making the playoffs. But hey, I mean, like, in a way, it's a win win because the Eagles get something out of it when it could have very easily just been nothing. Like, Last season, he was riding the bench, costing them all the money, and this year, he's at least getting a first round. Third. They're getting a first, third pick out of it? No, this year, they're getting a third, and then next year, it could be a second okay. or a first. All right, so I think that's it for us today. Covered a lot today. We got got through a multitude of sports. We did. Now that football's over, it kind of, and other things are starting up, but it kind of lets us branch out a little more, which I'm actually very much enjoying. Well, Tiger Woods gave us some headlines. Hopefully he full yeah. recovery. The NBA All-Star game. Hopefully uh, we get a nice, fun experience with that. Let's go Knicks. Stop doing dumb shit for clout. Uh, bar fights. This is a big, we've, two weeks, two episodes in a row talking about bar fights. Yeah, and who would have thought it when most of the bars in the country are shut down? <laughs> yeah, wear masks and stuff. And uh, Cam Newton, if you're gonna, if you're gonna see Cam Newton at his football camp, treat him with some respect. Yeah, like just make better decisions. He's a kid though, so yeah, don't want to harp on him too much. So what we got there? If you got anything you want to get off your chest or tell us, feel free to call. Follow us on all the socials. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. All the things. All the things. We have we have all the things, I promise you. It's 2021. Like, if you're not on these, the things, you got to get on the things. As much as I've been trying to fight it, I feel like we might need to start looking into a TikTok. <laughs> but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss internally. <laughs> all right. So, I am Chris Gray. That is Eric Mincer. Mike and Devin already left us. Love them, but, you know. We also have, like, day jobs and shit, so shit happens. Um, But, yeah, see ya.